Let's see, let's see. I think maybe my live one cut off because I was listening to my music, you know. Huh, that's crazy. Oh, let me tell my guest. Let me see, I think. Cause I, I feel like I feel like I told you guys my relationship with Instagram in regards to me playing music, right, during my lives. Because I'm trying to understand what's the point of music. I'm not copyrighted to listen to this music. How do that make sense? I'm just playing music in my life. Why am I getting taken off? But let me just make sure. Let me get my guy back on because it's not about my feelings with Instagram. Me and Instagram can have our little beef another time, right? Let me get. Why? I don't understand why Instagram treated me like that. Yeah, I don't know why Instagram was bugging like that. I don't know why Instagram was going <laughs> crazy. Probably the music. They are, they, bro, they hate me too. I can't do oh. anything involving music over here. Oh, like, I can't listen to nothing. I got, I got to listen to. I, you know what's crazy? I, I forgot because this happened to me a couple interviews ago. So I was like, all right, let me go and look for copyright free music on yeah. YouTube. You know, the elevator music. But, yeah. you know, I thought I could just sneak by today. But obviously, like, I'm, I'm on their federal watch list. Whatever. Happens. Yeah, they're tough, man. They're snipers. That shit is ridiculous. I'm saying, like, how, out of all the lives going on, they found my little rinky dink live to, to shut down. <laughs> but, like I said, without further ado, as we get back into the live uh, with technical difficulties, Welcome to another episode of Kicking It With Kachi, powered by DC Voice, which is premiering every Sunday at 7 p.m., 4 p.m. Pacific time, where we highlight entrepreneurs, moguls, visionaries, or anybody of color that's really just taking the industry by storm. And today, tonight, we have the opportunity and the pleasure of sitting down with the one and only DJ Jordan Jetson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Jordan, before we even get into what's going on now, right? Let's yeah. give the people that are coming in that are gonna that are gonna watch this when we post it later a little snippet or a little background of your origin story. Like, what is your villain origin story? How did you become this Jordan <laughs> Jetson that you are today? Oh uh, man, it's, it's it's pretty interesting. Um, so I've always had a love for music. Um, just tried out almost everything to kind of like express it that way. Like when I was middle school, high school. Um, you know, producing, poetry, rapping, a little bit of everything. Um, came into college at Howard um, my freshman year. Um, kind of just started off working with the radio station. Just, you know, something to do, join the uh, promotions team and everything. And then sophomore year was when I finally, like, started going out to parties. Uh, well, really, I got dragged out to it. My, one of my best friends, Izzy, he was a host. Um, and he was hosting a party at the infamous North Cap at Howard University, and um, he dragged me to a party. And he knew the DJ, so we were, like, behind the booth, you know, and I'm sitting there watching him go, who was my other best friend, Cam. And um, I think I had the same thought that everybody else has. And I was just like, I could do this shit. That shit was easy. <laughs> <You're> right. Um, <laughs> so sure enough, um, you know, I, I talked to Cam after the party. Um, I was like, yo, can you teach me? He was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll tell you what I know. Um, he gave me a couple lessons and then he was like, look, that's the basics really. And he was like, everything else from here is on you. Mm -hmm. So, um, after a couple months of me in my room, um, with my first controller that I had and a lot of like YouTube searches, a lot of practice, um, I dropped my, I ended up dropping my first mix. Um, I auditioned and got into Howard's Hottest, ended up winning Howard's Hottest. And that's kind of when I knew that I was, I, I wanted to do it like as a, as an actual thing. It became more than a hobby at that point. Um, the rest from that much is just pretty much just history. Just right. just good sets, good music, and good energy from that point on. So where are you from exactly? Like how, does that have a sort of influence as well on like the musical background? Um, a little bit. So uh, I was born in Chicago Heights, Illinois. Okay. Um, I was there for a couple of months uh, before I moved down to Georgia with my mom and my great-grandmother. 
uh, but my grandmother stayed in Chicago, and so I would visit every summer. Um, but of course, majority of my time I was spent down in Georgia. So right. I was hearing a lot of Southern music. I was hearing a lot of Outkast. Um, uh, my mother uh, is a big fan of Northern music, ironically. Um, right. <laughs> so she was listening to Jada Kiss. She was listening to Jay Z. Um, and then my grandmother, when I would ride with her to school, we were listening to to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So she was playing the the art, the old school R and B, the Isley Brothers. Uh, my uncle was influencing me with Teddy Pendergrass. My right. uncle influencing me with uh, Miles Davis. You know, like the classics. So I got a little bit of everything um, growing up, and I'm really grateful for that experience because it 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 just made my my taste when it comes to my sets even that right. much broader. You know, um, I like dipping in and out. I don't really like sticking to one lane. Um, I like going off the energy of the crowd and seeing where they're at and trying new things, trying something risky every now and then. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I got, it, it, it became pretty broad from wherever I was at the time. You know, honestly, looking at DJs, I feel like, like, people that are in the crowd, like, we, looking at you guys, like, you guys control the party. You guys are controlling the vibe, right? But... It's like you guys know the perfect song that's going to <laughs> mix it with another song. Like, so I'm just trying to like get into like the nitty gritty of like the method or like what sort of what do you do in terms of like getting these broad like essentially library of music, right? Because yeah. even as a black DJ, you're not you're probably expected to know about hip hop, R and B, soul, you know, yeah. jazz, all that stuff. But you probably may also have instances where you might have to write, you know, put some pop or some rock or yeah. some other stuff. Granted, these are all still black genres, but we know how, you know, how, you know how people like to be. Essentially. I totally so, understand. Right, exactly. <laughs> so how do you, how do you essentially, you know, cultivate a massive, a, like, mental library of songs? You just sit gotcha. in your room and just listen to music all day? Man, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes right. when it comes down to it, um, it's, it's a lot more, it's a lot of behind the scenes thing that people don't see. Um, we do a lot of research on when it comes to new genres. Of course, like even myself, I, I just, I know I, I'll never have every song. You know what I right. mean? You come, you kind of come to that realization early on. You can have as much music as you want, but of course you'll never have every song. So you may get a request that's completely left field and you, you just may not have it. That just, that just ends up being how it is. Um, so it's a lot of research. Um, checking different channels because not a lot of the old school songs may not be as easily available as others. Um, so YouTube helps a lot in that case. SoundCloud helps a lot. Um, when you got to kind of find some gems that just maybe didn't make it over to like the digital age, um, as well as other DJs. When you're going out listening to other DJs and you're hearing what they're doing, um, you may hear a song that you have in your library that you just don't play from time to time. You're like, oh, shit, I got to play that next time. Um, you see how the crowd reacts, you know what I mean? So it's a it's a combination of things um, when it comes down to it of, like, in the actual set, it's just muscle memory, you know what I mean? Right. Um, I have a couple of songs that, like, kind of trigger runs in my head. Like, I play this song, and I know I play this. And then, honestly, I might be going to the song that I know I want to play and see something else and be like, let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a fun process. Um, it's definitely a bit stressful in the moment because it's all like while it's happening. This yeah, exactly. You know, your mind is focused on a million things. You're watching the crowd. Right. You know, you're watching your computer. You're watching the, the actual equipment. Make sure everything's straight. People are talking to you. People are handing you drinks. People are dabbing you up. So right. it's it's a it's a hectic environment, but it's like a good hectic. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. And I was gonna say honestly, going into like you know, while you were at Howard. You start. You said you started out sophomore year, but then catapulted immediately into being the premier guy that's doing basketball, football, Howard's hottest, you know, fashion shows. Basically, when you're at Howard, any event that you needed that had to do music, it had to be Jordan Jetson. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. how does having that responsibility, how did that sort of translate into the professional career now of you having the responsibility of a greater audience? Um, I owe a lot of it to, um, WHBC. Um, I kind of started off there. That was when I won Howard's Hottest and then I became a DJ for the station. Um, and then their contracted events, that's why I was at, you know, every basketball game. That's why I was at multiple volleyball games. That's why I was able to do sports events, get that experience. Um, they had some private events that they had to work for sometimes, um, in case of, uh, you know, just uh, really needing a sound system. But then they were also like, oh, we need a DJ too. I was like, right. all right, perfect. Um, getting those experience in different areas early on, 
was really cool um in terms of the responsibility of catapulting and that i owe that to to the djs around me honestly um dj chubby swag uh who was like a big brother to me he was actually the one of the judges at the howard Tigers competition oh, nice. one. um and we had a conversation right after the show that day and he, he 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 told me these words and you know you hear him a lot but for some reason when i heard him from him i knew he meant it he was just like hey we gonna get you right he was like i like what you do we gonna get <laughs> yeah. you right um he's been he was a, a huge instrumental help in um me getting out of i won't say out of the howard bubble but transitioning from the howard right. bubble exactly. to actually like becoming a professional dj um becoming into the dc scene um whether it was just giving me a you know an hour or two at an opening set, you know certain people were in the room introducing me to other people, uh, right. promoters, uh, owners of venues, so on and stuff like that. He was really really big on that, and then that landed into me getting my first shot, my first residency at a uh, Cloak and Dagger. Um, shout out Malcolm Xavier, shout out Joy Club. Um, that that led to me getting um, take off Thursdays at Die Starts Monday. Um, shout out Scooty. That's a, another very very. All three of those guys very instrumental in, in me learning the the DC area, uh, being able to to spread my name and my brand myself. Um, right. And it's just like you know when you get an opportunity when somebody calls you, if everything's aligned, you just got to go for it and just do what you can. Um, and in that point, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And then you keep moving. <laughs> and you know, honestly, like I love. Because people always talk about the Howard bubble, even so the collegiate bubble, especially for yeah. like DJs. Like, you know, we have our anthems. You know you can essentially have about five or six songs that you can yes. play, and it would just rock, right? So what was, Absolutely. you know, not to pun unintended, but what was the transition like between going from the bubble to essentially, like you said, bursting out of the bubble and now tapping back into that mental music library and really flexing your repertoire at different events and different venues? It um it was fun. It was challenging. It was fun. Um, it allowed me to talk more with people. Like at events, I like to talk to the crowd um, when I can. Like when I have a chance to, to ask them how they're feeling, um, what they think of certain things, and like it's 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 a, it's also a double edged sword because most of those end up being like requests. And right, like, right. I don't hate requests, but I don't particularly like requests. Nine times out of ten, it's not the request itself. It's like what comes with the request. Right, so like exactly, people are right. drunk, people are, you know, amped up, people are, are intense in the moment, right. also while you're actively DJing. Um, but then there's times where people just like understand already and just lightly suggest a song. Mm -hmm. Or it's just a really good song to fit in that moment. It's like, oh yeah, I can do that. Um, a perfect example, end of the night, I was working at Cloak last Thursday or Friday, um, and I looked down at the crowd, and it's a girl holding up her phone, and it's, this is the first time this happened to me. So I've seen a bunch of memes where people are holding up their phone on, like, Snapchat, and yeah, there's yeah. text on it, and it's oh, yeah, random, it's yeah, random exactly. words yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, at first, I couldn't read it, so I felt bad. I literally said, I cannot see, right? right. She, she understood. She went back on her phone. She was typing again, and then she said, play FNF which is fuck uh, nigga free. Right. right. So I was like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, but then there's times like, oh man, I had a um I think I did it was a private event. It was like a it was a ball of some sort a couple years ago. And a girl wanted me to play uh Annie Up. Uh okay. yeah. So it's not it's not left field, but it was one of those moments like, damn. This is the first time I've been asked for that, and I don't have it. Right, okay. She was pissed. Damn. She was so pissed. And it's like, I'm look, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I, I I don't have it. She was like, you can't download it? I'm like, I'm actively doing <laughs> it right now. I don't have the Wi-Fi. Like, this is not a personal attack on you. I like this right. song, too. I just don't have it. Right. She, re she reported my Instagram that night. Oh wow! She genuinely, she genuinely asked for my Instagram and reported it. <laughs> like her friends were trying to calm her down. She did not give a shit. She didn't care. Um, she was very upset. And then I, you know, I went home and I was just like, "All right, let me download any up then." Right. <laughs> so it's just moments you know. like those. You you get those learning lessons of you know sometimes it's a good interaction, sometimes it's a not so good interaction. Um, 
and then you just you just keep digging. Whether it's record cools, whether it's talking to other DJs. Um, I've had a lot of DJs just be like, you know, what what uh, genre or what BPM do you need help in? You know, because um, there there are moments where I'm just like, damn, I don't know what to do next, and right. you kind of just got to take a, a risk on the moment. Um, so there's a lot of, of of there's a great DJ community out there which I love. You know what I mean? And they'll right. share songs, they'll share techniques. Uh, we'll talk about equipment all day long um and so yeah it's 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 a bit of everything it's a it's a big um it's just a lifestyle that you kind of fall into and you just continue to learn every single day every single set every single conversation you know um and it's a beautiful thing and you know in terms of connecting with people i see that now like especially with the digital age and uh, the pandemic that's been going on and people have not been able to have live events, you've taken mm -hmm. your time and gone digital, right? So yes. first I want to speak about the Twitch TV um, show that you have with just essentially these amazing mixes that you do live, right? And then also using that platform to raise money for bail funds and also just do a lot of amazing awareness things. So how did you essentially like to say, yo, honestly, Twitch is my route to go. And how has Twitch essentially helped catapult your, well, everything, essentially? Um, when the pandemic started, um, I think everybody kind of had the same thoughts. And they were just like, all right, we'll be out, you know, two, three weeks. We'll get back to it. Right. And then, <laughs> you know, those two, three weeks passed. And it just seemed like it kept getting worse. And nobody <laughs> really knew what to do. Um, so I, I just started getting the itch to DJ. Um, I tried Instagram live and the more people that tried it on Instagram, the more strict it got. So I remember right. I had like one, two, three, four, maybe four, I'll say total, a total of four, uh, Instagram live sets where each of them just ended up getting cut off. Right. Because um, of the music. Everything. Kind of because right. of the music. Exactly. Right. And, you know, you try different things, but it, it the end of the end, end of the day, the sensor still pick it up. Um, Chubby Swag, again, hit my phone, called me, and he was like, I just sent you a text. Click it on your computer and tell me what you think. And it was a link to Twitch. Uh, oh, okay. it was, I can't remember whose Twitch channel it was at the time, but it was a DJ. And he was DJing on Twitch. And, um, I was like, huh. I thought Twitch was just for video games. He was like... Right, exactly. Like, it's a <laughs> more visual thing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, he was like, well, yeah, it started that way. He was like, but I think we can make something happen. Right. So go through a week of, you know, research of what to get. Um, min bare minimum, like, specs at the time, because, of course, stores weren't really open like that. Um, at the same time, gig money is down, so it's not a lot you can spend on equipment. Right. Um, and then we did one last Instagram live set. We raised some money. People were just, people were really generous, uh, donated a lot of money to me. Um, cause I told them it was the last one, you know what I mean? And what I was right. trying to do. And, um, then we just kicked it up on Twitch. Uh, Twitch is super fun. The community is super like welcoming. It's really great. Um, I like that there's now a consistent DJ community on there. Um, I haven't done one in a while just because of the current space I'm in. I don't have as much um, area. Too booked and busy. You're too time. booked and busy. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. And then when the world started kicking up, of course, it just started happening less and less. But um, there were even some DJs in D.C. that um, I wasn't able to see or wasn't really able to connect with because we were all just working all the time. Every okay. Friday, Saturday night, it's like, oh, damn, I, I know this guy. I know of this guy. I know he's a great DJ. I want to go see him, but I'm also booked the same night. Damn. Right, exactly. Um, shout out, shout out, Bo. Shout out, Pedro Knight. Those are my guys. We were able to um, connect and build a friendship over Twitch. And then when the world opened back up, you know, we're damn near like brothers now. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it was it was really cool. It was a really good feeling um, to just kind of just had that outlet. And then um, Deja, my my sister, she's amazing. She helped me with uh, graphics. I got a, I bought a green screen. You know, at that point, I was just really, I was really interested. Okay, I was like, all right, I know I got the music. How can I make right, it exactly. as visually interesting as right. possible? And um, it was so, it's so much fun. It's it's a whole different world. 
Um, but it's a it's a it's a good new experience, and I'm I'm actually really excited to get back into it. At least I want to do like a twice a month type thing, mm -hmm. um, just for the people who aren't in DC, who are still fans of me, and who I met through Twitch alone. You know, right? So yeah, we'll get back into it. But it's a great thing. It's a, a great invention. And sticking with like the digital platform space, you also do a TikTok playlist curation that you do where yeah. songs you find on TikTok. <laughs> is it sort of like the music? So honestly, there's a lot of songs that I find on TikTok that mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have listened to on my own or would have even had on my radar at all. So is that sort of where your your mindset is going to where you just find these songs of these local indie artists on TikTok and just put them into a playlist that you feel like you know, matches a, a similar vibe with other songs? Yeah. Um, I, I I spend a good amount of time on TikTok. Uh, I'm actually a big, big fan of, you know, the platform, of course, you know, given all the heating, the concerns or whatever that people have, I totally get that. But in terms of uh, creativity, I think it's, it's, it's very close to like what Vine was, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's so many people out there that are that realize the worth in it and aren't particularly trying to manipulate it in a way they just want to get their music out there exactly. so i'm really happy with the way that i have my timeline curated now because i have like the good amount of like ignorance right well. exactly you have a little bit of ratchet, a little bit <laughs> ignorant and then exactly stuff that you the, actually need to be watching on your exactly feed. yeah exactly it's a good mix and I, I take my timelines very seriously it's the same thing with twitter um to be completely honest with you but twitter it's just like it's not as sharing friendly because even on right. then you have your problems like me, my main account got suspended for copyrights. I had, oh, wow. okay. I had six copyright notices. Um, and I put in two, three appeals, wow. uh, counter noticed a bunch of them. Cause they were just like memes. They were just stupid exactly. shit yeah, that had music over them. Um, and then six months later on, on Thanksgiving, I randomly got an email that my account was restored. Still don't really know why, still don't really right. know how. But it's, it's like those here. roadblocks that keep you from really like pushing what you want to push. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why I like TikTok because I mean, hey, there's not really copyright. There's I mean there's community guidelines, don't get me wrong, but you are free to create as much as you want. Nice. Um you know, you kind of gotta make sure you find the original source of the audio. Um, but yeah, a lot of these indie artists, man, I realized I was playing these songs over and over again and I was seeing them on my timeline over and over again. So I was like, damn, I really like all these songs. Fuck it. I'm just going to make a playlist. Right. And I was like, well, why don't I just make it public? All right, cool. And so even now, since then, um, I'm making a second one. Nice. So as soon as we get to a, a decent amount of tracks, I'm just going to put the second one out there because it just right. keeps going. It just keeps going. And that's beautiful. And I love how, like, throughout the interview, you've always touched on helping someone else or how someone else has helped you. And I feel like that essentially is the the seed link to your new baby homegrown media, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the origin story? Like, what's the story behind the Incubation Center, Homegrown Media? Yeah. Uh, so Homegrown really started off as, um, during, again, during the pandemic, me realizing looking at my story at the time i was all i was really doing was sharing other people's stuff um whether it was their creative endeavors their professional endeavors um i was i was sharing just a lot of posts that i came across on my feed just to get you know people's thoughts out there too because right, right. i knew everybody was feeling a certain way with everything going on um along with twitch that helped as well um and i was like okay, um, don't get me wrong, I am cool, you know, consistently doing this myself, because that's just a right. part of what I do. But I was like, what if I make something that can be its own and right. do it? Like, the, that's the exactly. purpose of it. So um, I think for two weeks, I, I just started writing ideas down of like kind of what I wanted it to be, even just a rough sketch. Um, and then I was... I think I went to the store one day, um, and this a lot of a lot of my ideas just pop randomly into my head. I think I went to the store one day, and I was walking back, and I was like, "Damn, it finally hit me!" And I was like, "What if there wasn't there was a thing that was kind of like a blog, but also a community that did a little bit of everything?" Right. Um, 
because I didn't want it to be just considered a site. I didn't want it to just be considered a blog. I wanted it to be part of a community. And um, that's kind of what it really spread into even ever since, you know, the world kind of opened back up. Um, and then we started doing events and then we started making merch and the summer collection actually is going to be dropping this week. I'm very, very excited right. to announce that. Yeah. So summer collection dropping this week. I'm excited. Um, we had a little bit of setbacks on the way, but it, it finally got done. Um, picking it up like tomorrow. I'm super excited. Um, and then it just kind of kept growing. And then I was like, Hey, I, this is really cool. I now have this outlet that me and I grabbed four of my best friends to join me on the journey. And, um, they were really helpful in, in helping me just get those ideas out. And, um, yeah, man. I mean, it's an ever growing journey. Never did I, I mean, never did I really think I would be considered like a quote unquote business owner or a right, exactly. brand owner outside of myself. Yeah, um, exactly. It's a really good feeling. It's a really and good feeling. like putting other people in different places, essentially what you just, like you said, you do naturally where even the TikTok playlist is you looking at people who you really don't know or really have no business, you know, really reason to promote, but just looking at the talent, the skill set, the work yep. ethic, right? The story, the future and the trajectory and saying, I want to be a part of pushing it forward. And yeah. honestly, that's what all of us should be doing, essentially. Yeah, so man. really commend you for even starting that and pushing that along and letting it become its own thing, you know? Thank you, man. I appreciate it. So... We know you got a summer collection coming this week, right? Mm -hmm. What else can we expect from you this year or in the coming weeks if you're looking at some of the short term as well? Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. So we're doing um, the summer collection for Homegrown is dropping this week. Um, I'll have another mix within two weeks uh, coming out. That'll be considered my my summer mix. Um, I dropped uh, Grow. It might be We might be going on a month now. Um, that was super fun. So I was like, all right, let's do another one. Fuck it. We're right. do another one. We'll make it a series. Um, so that's dropping within two weeks. Um, two months from now, we'll be throwing Jet Fest, uh, the fifth annual Jet Once Fest. Again, I'm very yeah. excited about that. That's my uh, yearly birthday party. Um, and last year, we really pulled it off. So this year, we're we're starting even earlier than we did last year. Nice. Um, and I'm gonna try to get some surprises in there for some for the for the people that were really down, you know. Um, and then other than that, man. Uh, just continue what I've been doing, you know, more gigs, more events. Um, I've been event planning on the side, not on the side, really, because I guess I've always been an event planner, but right. I have some parties now that I've just been a promoter for, um, an organizer for, and it's a, it's a even more fulfilling feeling, you know? Um, right. So be on the lookout for that. Um, shout out Dream Marketing Group, shout out Grits, um, shout out Joy Club. Those are, that's all my family right there. Um, and just be on the lookout, man, and just, you know, continue to, to thank people for the support that they've been giving me. Um, I'm excited to keep going, as, of course, and I'm excited to see people at these events, at these experiences that we're creating. And, um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And, like, before I let you go, I love to do a little lightning round so I can get to know a little nitpicky. Of your, of your mental, your modula, you know what I'm saying? Word. So it's a <laughs> couple questions, a couple questions, but I hope it doesn't make you too uncomfortable, right? Nah, so the first it. one is, as a DJ, I know you got a multitude of like music that you listen to, but do mm -hmm. you have your top five favorite artists? Top five favorite artists. Um, let's go Currency. Let's okay, go, wow. we'll go Jay-Z. Um, we'll go older Kanye. Um, newer stuff, kind of, eh, but mainly right. older Kanye. Um, yeah, okay. So that's really up to... We'll, we'll, we'll stop it around Life of Pablo. Okay, all right, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll hit right around there. All right. Um, we'll go... You can sneak walking on in there, too, yeah. That, yeah, it's yeah. on the right time. Right, <laughs> exactly. We'll just sneak it in right, right, right after Watch the Throne, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, currency Jay Z, Kanye. We'll go. Um, I'll admit one of my one of my favorite artists for sure. Uh, Quentin Miller might be unexpected, but wow. Quentin Miller. Um, ending it off, we'll give it to. Um, damn, it's a tough one. We'll give it to Key from Atlanta. Nice, nice. All right, so. What is one song that you're always going to play at any function? Poof, that's a tough one. Um, 
buy you a drink, T Pain. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Classic. And, uh, and you wear wedding, funeral, mm. club, like every setting, it is perfect. It has never not once failed me, ever. So ever. what are in, in in bestowing some knowledge, what are five DJ essentials that everyone that uh aspiring DJ should have? Man, um a willingness to, to learn, um, confidence. You got to have your own confidence. You got to have your ego, but you also got to have your humility. Um, so we'll say a willingness to learn, confidence, humility. Um, we'll say um, just a love for music. You got to love music, of course. Um, and then on the end of it, um, we'll say a really good mattress because you're going to be tired. <laughs> right. You're, you're going to be tired, right. especially if you're like doing a full time thing along with DJing. Um, you got to you got to give yourself some time to relax. You got to give yourself time to decompress out of out of both of those areas. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So going into that, what do you do to unwind, essentially? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big gamer. Honestly, I'm a big gamer. Um, I play a lot of 2K. Um, I play some Grand Theft Auto here and there, Red Dead Redemption. I'm big on RPGs. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, just chilling with the honestly with the homies in the party. Um, it's just it's it's easy to get your mind off things, um, as well as it's also fun to like be competitive sometimes outside of the real world, if you will. Right, exactly. Um, right. Yeah, and then I have some solo player games that I play myself. So when I really want to like dive into a story and it just, like I said, it just takes your mind off things. Right. You know, exactly. It takes your mind off things. Yeah. I guess some Assassin's Creed, I could be on that for hours. Just yeah. conquering quests. Just and keep just, going. Right. Exactly. And even after you beat it, you can keep going. <laughs> right. Exactly. So to end off the interview, right. So what are three lessons that you learned on your journey thus far? Man. Um, first one is, um, First one is I'll say never forget where you came from. Um, I consistently just remember, you know, when I first started off just DJing at the front desk in Drew. Um, right. Like when, when, like when visitation when was ending, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, that one I kind of struggle with myself because I'm, I'm just that type of person in general. But I realized once I talked about, like I said, the DJ community that I mentioned earlier, um, more more people than – others are open to help are open to talk about DJ and are open to, you know, building the community more and more. Um, and then number three, um, just remember to have fun with it. It's easy to get caught up into the, to the, the, I guess the, the money. It's easy to get caught up into like, um, comparing yourself to others. It's easy to get caught up in the thought that, you know, you should be somewhere else um so just remember to have fun with it remember to 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 always just know that it's the love of music that fuels everything right mm -hmm. so we got never forget where you came from mm -hmm. never be afraid to ask for help mm -hmm. just have fun with it because it's the love before the money and yeah everything. so honestly jordan jetson thank you so much for coming on this show and really bestowing some amazing gems and yeah, some knowledge and just sharing your story. Yeah, thank you for coming through, honestly. And you guys that have been watching can watch this interview later on on the DC Voice. Make sure you guys follow the Jordan Jetson, uh, DJ Jordan Jetson, and also Homegrown Media. That's Home, G-R-W-N. You got it. Um, is the handle as well. Also, check out the Summer Collection that's going to be coming out this week for yep. this guy and more events that's coming to come out um, with Jordan Jetson in DC and beyond. I hope you guys have an amazing night. Catch you guys next week. We out. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir.